Hey guys, what's up? Johnny Glock. Um, wanted to make a video even though I'm extremely busy and I get this out to you guys. Um, one thing I do want to put across, you know, I, I'm known for my triggers. I do have Johnny Custom Glocks. It's uh, known as a trigger company, but um, I have always, and as of late, I've been getting a lot more of uh, people sending me their guns. And, and what's interesting, you know, with all the slide cuts and all the other stuff that's happening with stippling and all that, I think, um, you know, people have lost sight of actually the performance, the functioning performance of the handguns. And a lot of the, the quote, performance shops that I've seen too are just, um, uh, I'm not mentioning any of them, but they're, it's just kind of marginal work. You know, I, I see it and I, and I look and I'm like, man, am I crazy? Or is everyone like, is everyone's bar set lower or something like that? Am I just ODC? Is something wrong with me? <laughs> anyway, um, so I want to put that across. I take guns and I give them back with complete perfection. The turning over is usually two, three weeks at the most, depending on how busy I am. Um, this includes trigger groups work. It includes, uh, you know, things like polishing the barrel feed ramp, doing striker stuff, uh, polishing, work on these tabs, tightening the slide, any and every aspect that can be handled, not be handled, any, any aspect that makes this gun function better. Um, a lot of competition shooters have been using me because I just get those tolerances so tight, but at the same time, I'm allowing for um, the gun to feed any kind of ammunition. You're not having light strikes, you're not having issues. I mean, let's face it, you buy a Glock so it can go bang. Well, any gun you want to go bang every time. But um, you don't want feed, you don't want any issues. You know what I mean? You just want to be able to, let's go. And uh, I build them around that idea, but I build them in a way that I know everything is absolutely functioning, what I would consider my standard as perfection. So, um, I'm going to visit something real quickly here. Uh, I had uh, Alex Shooter207 on Instagram's gun that he sent me, and you saw how it was hanging up back here. And I said, that's a test for usually like a recoil uh, spring weakness. But I knew that wasn't the case because it was even heavy. It was a Zevtech slide, which I have here. And for this lightened slide, uh, it was 17 pound spring. It would, it would not do that. So there was definitely something going on if a lightened slide is hanging up before going into battery. Um, and so I'm gonna bring the camera down now and go through some of this stuff. And then what, I, what, my, what I'd like you to do is kind of like look at your guns and see if there's anything like this going on. And then by the next videos, I keep putting up, we kind of like, you know, if your slides out and stuff like that, we can do it from that aspect. So I'm gonna bring the camera down now. It's gonna kind of be a hodgepodge to you because I have a bunch of stuff out here. Um, and I wanna get some, things put across so you can see okay so first of all um, here's the slide and uh, you can see the wear on the inside of you know what is this called the cam right here basically and that is what pushes the hand of the connector over um, and I did a little bit of work on it I should have left it how it was I started I'm like oh dang I should leave this so everyone everyone can see uh, what the what the deal is but against now if you look at all these aspects of it right here against a OEM slide you can definitely see that there are keep in mind the one with the cutout <clears throat> the one with the cutout is the one with the cutout right here is the Zevtech while you're looking at these so You can see even with the Glock slide, there's some cut in that area. That's a used slide, by the way. But what's interesting is <clears throat> these aspects right here. I'm trying to let this go without getting out of the camera. But there's a difference in between right here and right here on these guns. It's the angle and the length of it and the thickness and some other things. And that's where basically the hand, which is this part right here, of the connector is hanging up. Now, you know, everyone wants to talk about connectors and which is the best for the firing of the trigger mechanism, <clears throat> but there's more to it than that. So here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start looking at these hands right here. So here's a Glock store. You can see how fat and stout that is, but it's 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 not really rounded. Moving next to a Zevtech, it's pretty much rounded. 
you know, I, I really do like the, oops, like the way that actually is. There are other aspects of this I'm not too crazy about. Um, same thing with the lone wolf. You can see the lone wolf. I'll turn it this way as well. Has some edges that I have to knock down right there. Uh, now this is a, <clears throat> this one is a Glock that I've kind of tuned a little bit. And you can see how it takes a more of like a very smooth round to it. This is a Glock dot connector. Going this way, sorry. That's a Glock dot connector. <clears throat> and you can see with the Glocks that it's almost like there's lines here and here that are going to cause some trouble. And because remember, it's a production gun. And then these last two are um, rockets, ghosts. And you can see the, the different size, and the, there's all different attributes to each one of these hands that is going to potentially cause issues or need to be smoothed out because they are stamped parts. Um, especially with the, the, the um, these ones right here, that small little hand in this cam really likes to jam up when it's running right in there. I can't tell you how many people start to feel that glitch when they start running uh, ghost products. That's one of the things that sort of happen. Um, so what you guys can do is you can get your slides out. This is an OEM slide and you can kind of inspect them in here and you know see what's going on for you. And I'm sure you'll be surprised of, of what you find. Next is right here. That is being caused by something and usually there's a matching line on the other side it's just a little bit on the other side but um that's another thing we're going to go over so check on your slide right there by you know where the slide lock is if there's two little lines you know on on either side right there it's like a where the slide's been rubbing against something and just in general a lot of times you'll see this nick right here too this is from uh the ejector hitting that you'll even have that sometimes on a glock slide let's see not as much on that slide, but then again, you can see the, the cutaway there has a cam right there, has some indentation in it. And what, you know, with the loose tolerances like these guns have, the theory is, you know, eventually it's gonna work itself out. You know, it's gonna, because, you know, the metal on metal is gonna smooth it out, but that's not, you know, that's not what you pay for if you're, if you're trying to go performance. Um, so these, those are one aspects of this connectors, and I'm gonna show how they, function and some trouble you can get into and how to remedy it in the next video because like I said I'm just going over things because I'm so just bogged down also we're going to look at safety plungers firing pins and the difference with these that you're really looking at I'm gonna cut this light over top of them is uh, the relationships you know the relationships with these it's like the surface area of this the angles of this look at all the differences you have you know, the really rounded button, you have the beveled edge there, you have a different beveled edge here. This is uh, one that I did where it's got a lot of surface area there, but you don't have the, the, the line that the Glock OEM has, which is this one right here. So there's differences to all this. You can see how mangled this one is right here on the shelf. There's a reason for that. This one's mangled as well. There's reasons for all this stuff, and when you see these kind of things in your gun, uh, you're gonna want to remedy it because, like, this is a major malfunction waiting to happen, and that goes in relation to the shelves on the striker. And I've talked about this before, but if I turn this one right here, you can see, and this one was matched up with the one that was really marred, and you can see right here that area was just slamming into that uh, slamming into that shelf and that's a problem okay and then if I you know if I turn these side by side I mean I don't even get a micrometer you can see the difference in between this shelf right there how much longer it is and the OEM shelf right there how how much shorter that is just these little areas alone here versus try to get some light off of that versus there. And so those 
also have to correspond with what is called the vertical extension to depress these. So, you know, how I scallop away these, you know, a little bit of area here so these aren't encroaching on that, that all depends on what safety plunger I'm using as well. So, um, you know, let me grab one of these. It's cut out a little. Now I can get away with that little bit of a cutout depending on what, if I'm using more of a button like this, this one right there. Okay, it's gonna work better with that. If I'm building a, you know, a defensive trigger, I want as much surface area as I can right here. And that's, like I said, that's the OEM just with a little bit of modification. I want as much surface area as I can, so I'm gonna have to work this differently. So you have all these relationships, this relating to this, which relating to this, which has to do with spring tension, with the, with the firing pin, uh, spring, it, it just goes on and on and on. And if you don't know how these relationships work together with one another, uh, and you just start throwing stuff in your gun, you're gonna have issues over time. Um, problem is a lot of these, a lot of you guys, I'm not gonna say you, but a lot of guys will just, you know, get a really awesome looking gun and they're only gonna shoot it like a thousand, two thousand times. You know, they just like guns. So if that's the case, you know, have at it. But if, if you're looking to really, you know, if your life's hanging in the balance or if you're a competition shooter or if you just really enjoy shooting performance uh, firearms, it's a different story. And so like with this, like this relates to this, which is going to relate to battery, which you saw, which is gonna make the lockup not as on as you want it to be. Um, the wide back wide angle out here. And so these are some of the things that uh, we're gonna be going over in these, in, ooh, I'm always getting cut off here. My excellent skills. Um, that we're going to be going over uh, why these happen, how to remedy them, um, if it's at a point, if it's too far, point of no return. There's all kind of different things that, um, that you can look out for and uh, make sure that your gun is working. Those are m major relationships right there. And also, all that stuff is going to change as soon as I tighten the slide. So if you tighten the slide and don't do anything to the internals, there's going to be issues. If you're uh, minimizing the slide weight and still using the same ammunition and changing things up, like if you're shooting, especially 40 caliber beats the crap out of the gun, you know, guys will throw an 11 pound, uh, you know, recoil assembly in there and a four pound uh, striker spring and there's issues there all the time. You know, there's just these combinations and relationships. I mean, I've been doing this professionally for over a decade and you know, six or seven years before that, just as, as, as an enthusiast. So I've had thousands of these guns come through my hands. And uh, with that kind of time and experience behind it, you start to see things, they just, they just jump right out. Oh, 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 and thank God, because you know, knowing, these, knowing this information, it just makes it way more efficient uh, when you are putting a performance piece together. Uh, and that's kind of my game, you know what I mean? Like even if it's a carry gun, I want that thing to perform to its maximum ability um, so along with this stuff I just you know kind of want to put my shingle out there like I'm open for sending guns you know what I mean if you uh, and, and, and as you can see I'm taking Zeptech slides in I saw I did some videos on uh, SJC any of these guys that you know if you feel like you don't have the performance level that you want or some of these tests from showing you to shake or do this and it's and it's not that way then um, you know give me a call can, uh, we can talk about it and see if I can do something for you. So that's the video for today. Um, www.johnnyglocks.com is the website, which really just says call me. You can read the descriptions of the triggers on there. Um, 941-376-4383. That's 941-376-4383 is the phone number. And getjohnnyglocks at gmail.com is the email. Um, so I hope you enjoyed today's video, and like I said, well, it's a lot of information. You know what I mean? I have to find a way to break this down, and as you see, my camera work is not the best, but break this down so I'm doing my due diligence to show everyone exactly how these things function together. This is kind of like a broad overview today, and then um, with preceding videos and successive videos, we'll start really getting down to the nitty-gritty of 
these different relationships within the Glock handgun. Okay? Take it easy.